Welcome back. Well, we're going to do something today that we've done before, but we haven't done in a while, and I thought maybe it's time to revisit. So, today we are looking at household hacks, and I've got 30 of them for you. I figured we'd see if we can get through one a minute. Oh, and here, say hi. Baby's here too. Uh, it's amazing to me as soon as I flick this switch for the camera, he's in my lap. How does he even know? But he does. Go ahead, say, I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeVille. Honestly, he was born to be a diva. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, 30 hacks in 30 minutes. Let's see if we can get through this. Pots boiling over on the stove. This happens when you're boiling spaghetti or potatoes or anything where you need to bring a pot of water up to a full boil and then suddenly it starts bubbling all over the place and on the burner. And if you've got a gas burner, it can blow your gas out and eek. Just take a wooden spoon and rest it right across the top of the pot and that will keep the bubbly water from going over. So I actually tried that when I first read about it, and yes, it works. So give it a try. Um, so you want to make like a grilled cheese sandwich or a, some sort of open-faced warm sandwich, and you don't want to have to pull out the toaster oven or start the regular oven. Take your toaster and flip it on its side and pop your bread in horizontally instead of vertically. And whatever is on the top will melt without making a mess all over the toaster. Again, didn't believe that one would work. Gave it a try. It did. I just used cheese, but I know people who like all kinds of interesting crumbly stuff melted on their bread. And someone told me they had actually made bruschetta chopped up tomatoes and basil and whatever on the bread in the toaster this way. Another one. Give it a try. Um, yes, I need to take a look at this. Um, ah, okay. So, you'd like to hold a nail. Bang it into the wall, but you'd just as soon not smash up your thumb and four fingers. Well, I always used a pair of needle nose pliers for that. Grab the nail in the pliers, hold it up so that the hammer's over here, and my hand is, like, over here somewhere. Safe, safe, bang, bang. And because the needle nose pliers are very thin, you can get that nail almost all the way in before you have to pull the pliers away. Saw so another interesting one that will work just as well, but you don't have to worry about whether or not you have the pliers. And pardon that camera jiggle. That was Audie taking off for greener pastures. Clothespin. Nail in clothespin. Bang, bang, tap, tap. It works. Um, let's see. Ah. So, it's getting to be summertime. Ah, and he's back again. It's getting to be summertime, and it's time for the beach. It's time for the picnics. And, you know, you're sitting out on uneven surfaces like the beach sand or the picnic grass. And you've got your soda. And we're going to say it's a soda and not something alcoholic. And you can't seem to figure out how you, you're going to position your soda so it doesn't fall over. Well, hey, it's at the beach. You're taking your shoes off anyway. Pop the soda right into your sneaker. Your sneaker will hold it upright. Um, again, really works. Um, oh, and if you're at the beach, you can actually just sort of scrunch your sneaker a little into the sand to keep it very firmly wedged. All right. Ah, uh, toothpaste. I think we've talked about this before. Toothpaste will do everything from clean the scratches off your car headlights, which can get them like gleaming like diamonds, right up to polishing the family silver. Uh, toothpaste is uh, oh, it's a mild abrasive. So if you're going to use it on the silver, don't make a habit of using it all the time. Consider it an emergency. I ran out of silver polish option. Uh, 
but things like plastic, sure. You know, the way it polishes the car headlights is it's abrasive, so it cleans out all the little scratches that result in that cloudy haze on the plastic headlight. In the meantime, of course, you can use it on any plastic surface you'd like to revitalize. Um, and I've used it on, literally, I've used it on vinyl, vinyl on dolls to take out light scratching. It does work. Okay. Um, polishing furniture. If you need an emergency furniture polish in a jam, grab a walnut. A walnut is full of walnut oil, which is a natural wood oil. You, you have a scratch on a piece of furniture, you grab your walnut and just rub it into the scratch and bang, it's full of just 100% pure natural walnut oil. Uh, oh, by the way, the wood doesn't have to be walnut either because the oil will fill it in and blend in with the surrounding woods. So, if you're in a pinch for a little bit of furniture polish to cover a scratch, a walnut. Oh, by the way, I've not tried this with other nuts because I find walnuts to be the oiliest nuts. So for me, they are the best to use this for. But feel free to try with other nuts. After all, nut oil is nut oil is nut oil. And basically, you know, it comes from a tree. So, you know, it'll work. Um, let's see. Ah, so you've dropped something on the floor, um, at the back of an earring, um, you know, uh, something important, but teeny, 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 tiny. For me, that's kind of earring backs because I drop those things everywhere. And the truth is I lost an earring back just this morning, but I get my earring backs in lots of a hundred. I swear I do. And I keep them in baggies because I, I lose so many of them. Uh, it doesn't even pay to go looking for them. I just grab a new one. You want to find your earring back on the floor? Take a stocking, a nylon stocking. By the way, any light piece of fabric like that, you know, maybe a loosely woven scarf will do. Cover the nozzle and start vacuuming. Anything small like your earring back is going to be stuck on the um, uh, on the cloth of the stocking or the scarf or whatever you've chosen to use where you can just pick it off. Uh, and it really does work. That's another, you know, super easy. You want to pick up something you've spilled on the floor, but you can't find it. Uh, oh, cleaning screens. One of the easiest ways to clean a screen is with a lint roller. Just rub your lint roller on. A lot of the gunk on a screen, both inside and out, is basically just dust. If you live um, in a congested city area or if you live near highways, on the outside of the screen, you'll have dust from car exhaust. On the inside, it's dust from your home. If you have fans going and air is circulating well in your household, it can be both sides. Lint roller, clean up your screens like nothing. Ah, okay. This one I decided to throw in just because I am not advocating. Just throwing it out there. So, it's summertime. And we've got our little soda that we've got parked in our shoe. Well, let's say it's not a soda. Let's say it's something that we really don't want the neighbors to know we're drinking out in the yard with our picnic. If you take your average soda can, it's a Coke can, cut it down the side, cut the top off. And by the way, this is so easy. You can actually do this with a regular pair of household scissors because that aluminum is, is fine. It's, it cuts like paper. You cut the top off that can, cut a slit down the side. You drop your other can of heaven only knows what that you don't want the neighbors to see right into the soda can and bang, instant hide the vices from the neighbors, not advocating, because as I've said before, I'm no drinker, all the alcohol on the planet could fall off tomorrow, take me 10 years to figure out it was gone. But I do understand that very often someone might want to have a little something and just might not want to share that fact with the neighbors. All right. 
gas. So, you know what side of your car your gas gauge is on, or your gas cap, gas. Fill your car up with gasoline. You can see I'm not a driver. Now, you know on your own car which side it's on, because this is your car. You're in it every day. So what happens if you're in a rental car, if you've borrowed a car, if your car's been in an accident, you've got a loaner car, and you don't know? Look at your gas gauge. There's a little picture of a gas pump and a little arrow next to it. That tells you what side your gas cap is on, so you know which side of the pump you have to pull in on. I did not know that. I guess that's like secret mystical driver knowledge but I thought that was extremely clever. I asked a couple of drivers. They didn't know that either. So keep that in mind. Strange car. That's how you tell which side the gas cap's on. Um, hmm. Oh, bar soap. That's what I wrote. Having a little trouble reading this. So you get down to the end of your bar of soap. And it's like this big and it's all squishy and you figure you're going to throw it away. There are a couple of things you can do. So because, I mean, why waste it? You can take that little bit of bar soap and your next bar of soap, the new one, squish that right on top and it will just form right in and you can keep on using it. My mother used to grab the ends and stick them somewhere to let them dry, like in a box or something. And when she got a goodly chunk of little ends of bar soaps, she would throw them into an old nylon stocking, tie it off, and it was soap on a rope, um, which was very handy. And frankly, I think she was ahead of her time because although they did have soap on a rope, I think, it wasn't really well known. I think my mother probably thought she invented it. But it was a great way to use up the little itty bitty soap ends and not have to throw it away. It was also a great way to deal with the nylon stocking that had too many runs to be useful for anything else. Um, ah, microwave. You want to clean your microwave the easy way. Take a cup of water. I usually Put a little bit of vinegar or a little bit of cleaner like uh, like a 409 type cleaner or Windex type cleaner. I pu a few drops into the cup of water, stick it in the microwave, uh, heat it for maybe two, three minutes to just get that steamy stuff all over the inside of the microwave. Open the door, let it sit for a minute or two, go in, wipe it off. Even the worst gunk will come up because it's been steamed off. So makes the job very easy. Um, oh, curtain rod uh, in the shower. Sometimes shower curtains are not the right size. Uh, most of them are fairly standard, but there can be differences of uh, an inch or two in the length of a shower curtain. If you end up with a shower curtain that is too long, it's usually not too much of a problem. You know, you kind of scooch it out of the way. But if it's too short, water can escape. So how do you get it down to the bottom? Add an extra set of curtain rings on top. Just hook one curtain ring into the other. And you can actually do several sets. Because let's face it, your, your shower curtain can come down maybe this far below a rod and it's still doesn't interfere with its functionality. So extra curtain rings on the shower rod can extend the length of the curtain. Uh, uh, okay, ice. I got two ices here. Ice pack. So summer has come and you're out and we're engaging in sports and all these recreations and we get an injury, something minor, need a little ice pack. Well, ice packs are expensive when you have to buy them at the drugstore. And you lose them all over the place. I lose mine all the time. Um, I'm not sure how. It's almost like there's some sort of ice bag gremlin that comes and steals them. You want a quick, easy ice pack. I know you're going to say a, a bag of frozen peas, but not everybody has frozen peas in their freezer. Take an ordinary sponge, just a household sponge, Load it up with water, wet, wet, wet. Throw it in a baggie, throw it in the freezer. No big deal. 
you use it, if you end up losing it, well, sponges are cheap. So, and it will work. And as it, as the uh, sponge melts, which it, with the water will melt very quickly, it conforms to your shape. You want to wrap it around your knee or your elbow, works really well. Another ice is summertime, picnic, shoe, yeah, alcoholic beverage in the Coke can, etc., etc. Well, if you want to get a little more life out of the ice in your cooler, sprinkle salt on the ice. Salted ice will stay colder longer, and you can get as much as two more hours out of the ice in a cooler just by adding salt. Again, another one I've tried, and it works. Um, okay, related. It's summertime. You have a bottle of soda, or whatever, and it, it's you haven't put it in the fridge yet. It's room temperature. You want it to cool off fast. You think to yourself, gee, maybe I'll put it in the freezer. But you remember, the last time you put a bottle in the freezer, you forgot about it. You came back an hour later and the bottle was cracked. Easiest way is wet a paper towel, wrap the bottle in a paper towel, put that in the refrigerator. It will drastically speed up the cooling time and probably get you to cool just as quickly as it would have if you had thrown it in the freezer. Um, and there is like the scientific principle behind that that I'm pretty sure I studied in high school physics, but to tell you the truth, I do not remember how that works. Um, okay, pants hangers. Those hangers you get from the stores with the little clips on the end to hold pants or skirts. They can hold potato chips or any other like snacks in bags and you can hang them and if you have a pantry a few hooks on the wall a little rod anything like that hold up your snack bags if you want to hold up something like a magazine to read a recipe pop it onto the little pants hangers pop your hanger onto the cabinet door on the knob cabinet door and there it is. You can read it. So, pants hangers. Very handy. You don't have pants hangers. You'd like to turn one of your regular hangers into pants hangers. Clothes pins. Super easy. They will not only hold pants and skirts, but stack them all up. They'll hold scarves and ties, too. Um, oh, can of Coke. So, that can of Coke that you're going to cut down to hide your snacky drinks. Before you do that, toss it in your toilet bowl. It will help get rid of your rust stains and your calcium and lime and hard water buildup. Again, it works. Uh, I'm sure you've all done those experiments back in high school where you threw a steak in a pan of Coca-Cola and like two days later it disappeared. Or, again, a pie plate full of Coca-Cola, drop a nail in it, and watch what happens after a few days. Yeah, I know, and we still drank that stuff. But oh, God, what idiots we were. Um, anyway, Coke, toilet, rust stains, gone. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Okay, you go to the store, you buy something, it's in a plastic blister pack. We all know what those are. I've had trouble with this, so I loved this solution. You're trying to get it home, and you, know, you get it home, and you're trying to get it open. I have taken sharp knives, and I swear I've been in serious danger of hurting myself. It's usually those are usually the points where I say, you know, I, I'm cursing the manufacturers, saying, oh, "What's wrong with people that package things like this?" The only way to get this item out of this blister pack is to score it with a utility knife and. By the time you're done, you're lucky you have all your fingers and toes. Take a can opener. I tried that one. It took me a few tries to get the can opener in the right position, but a can opener will cut open a blister pack and all your fingers and toes are intact. But like I say, it took me a few tries to line that can opener up properly. But 
as far as I was concerned, it was worth it because even a few tries with a can opener was less time consuming and considerably less dangerous than stabbing it with a sharp knife, which is what I was doing before. Um, keys. So you got a stack of keys, keychain, key, 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 key. Which one is your house key? Which one is your car key? Grab some nail polish. You can usually do this from the dollar store. Very cheap. They'll often have them for sale, like three for a dollar in the, the colors that you know, are left on the shelves, which are usually some pretty outlandish colors. Get yourself a few bottles of different colored nail polishes. Paint the tops of your keys and then take the nail polish and paint a color onto the side of your lock. Super important if you live in a high crime area where you are going to want to be able to get from your car into your house reasonably quickly and not fumbling around on the doorstep, especially at night. And, and all those of you who live in cities or have ever lived in the cities in the past know what I'm talking about. You know, you want to get inside quickly because standing out on on your doorstep at two in the morning in some parts of town is not a smart thing to do if you have your car parked in a, a parking garage uh, that's where your office is you're leaving late at night you're by yourself big empty parking garage you are going to want that car key color-coded to your car lock you know that's how you do it bunch of keys every key has its own color and that color matches the lock also especially helpful for keys you don't use very often so you're just not familiar with the look and feel of that key for example you might have a number of keys for interior garage doors and things like that that you just don't play around with that much and this will help um ah rubber bands we talked about this the last time we talked about household hacks. You take a nice wide rubber band and you pop it around the rim of those screw-in light shades, the kind that go into ceiling lights and they have little screws that set in place, especially the lights on ceiling fans, but it's just the shade. Pop a wide rubber band in and the rubber band sets, or the screw sets against the rubber band. It's not screw to glass, which is a breakage issue, and um, it'll stop any rattling. But take that same rubber band, if you've got a stripped screw, you pop the rubber band over the head of the screw, pop your screwdriver in, twist. The rubber band will very often lock in to the little opening in the top of the screw head, especially Phillips head, get, they get stripped very easily. Uh, and the reason that happens, by the way, if you tend to strip your screws, what you're doing is you're not holding your, your screwdriver absolutely perpendicular to the head. You're coming in on an angle one way or another. That's what will strip a screw. But pop that rubber band over, start turning. The rubber band will fill in the gaps and might help you actually get the screw out uh, and beats the daylights out of having to cut the screw off. Oh, uh, let's see. More summer stuff. Picnic. Soda in shoe, etc. Starting the fire to do the cookout. You don't have fire starters, but you've probably got a bag of potato chips. Potato chips make great fire starters because they are small, they are oily, they are starchy. The oil will get the fire going and the starch will burn. So a handful of potato chips makes a great fire starter. Also, a uh, similar subject, you need to start a fire quickly. You know that lint you pull out of your dryer vent? Stick it in a baggie, stick it out by the grill or you know into your picnic basket, whatever. A handful of dryer lint is perfect kindling to get a fire started. Um, okay, if you have a television set, and these days modern television sets all have this, they have USB ports. Your USB port, you can use that to charge your cell phone. So you're sitting watching TV, plug your phone in, 
let it charge while you're watching television. Uh, most people don't realize that the television will plug, will, will charge a cell phone. No extra energy usage. It's just sort of taking the energy off the television. So you can save yourself a few, well, it's probably fractions of a cent. It's not a lot of energy to charge a cell phone, but it keeps the cell phone right in front of you while you're charging the TV, while you're watching the TV and the phone is charging. So you don't have to say to yourself, where did I leave my phone? And it's right there. You know, you're doing it anyway. One more thing while you are charging your phone, put it in airplane mode. It'll charge faster. So, the um, dishwasher tablets, those little cleaning dishwasher tablets, drop one of those down your kitchen drain. It will help to dissolve things that, that potentially clog up your drain. Bits of debris, yeah, that stuff will actually help to get rid of uh, the debris, clean out your drain, make it flow faster. Coffee grinds. Um, a lot of us save our coffee grinds for composting. Uh, and if you have a bag of garbage, you know, if you're going to save it for composting, great. Throw your coffee grinds in. It'll eat up odors. Even if you don't, every once in a while, sacrifice, um, you know, a pot full of coffee grinds to the garbage. Because if your garbage is smelling bad, a nice dumping of coffee grinds on the top will help to eat up the odors. Um, let's see, you know, another one, oh, I'm thinking it's not on my list, but I was just thinking odors. Smelly shoes, summertime, sneakers, that's where my mind's been going with this. If you would like to get rid of the stinky smell from sneakers, drop a tea bag, a, not a used tea bag, a fresh tea bag, in each one of the sneakers, leave them overnight. It'll cut the odor. Um, grapes. Freeze some grapes. Uh, a handful of white grapes in the freezer. Great snack. Also, if you want to chill your white wine, remember summertime and you know, picnics and whatever, throw in a handful of white grapes um, because you don't want to ice your wine. But especially if you're going out, a nice little handful of frozen grapes will act as little ice cubes and the grapes are tasty. Frozen grapes make great snacks too. Um, faucets. You want to clean your faucet, your shower head, anything like that. Easiest way to do it is fill a baggie full of vinegar. Pick it up around the faucet, tie it off with a twist tie or a rubber band so that the faucet is sitting in the baggie. Um, by the, you can also pull out your aerators and drop them into a cup full of vinegar. Do the same thing. But very often there is a residue of lime and calcium and so on on the inside of the faucet pipe itself. And the vinegar will eat that away and get you a smooth flowing faucet. Um, And finally, this one is sort of computer security. I just threw it on the list because it occurred to me. And when you are choosing a password for your computer, consider adding a foreign character. Check the Cyrillic alphabet. Check the Greek alphabet. These days, computers have access to all kinds of keyboards. Grab one of those characters, throw it into your password, and easy as you please. People do not, hackers do not think of doing that for some reason. No idea why, you know. Um, and your password will be 123 Alpha Lambda. Just doesn't occur to people. And you're probably saying, yeah, but my keyboard doesn't have those characters. And so how am I going to come up with that? Well. If on your computer you simply save a document that has a few of those characters logged into it just as a Word document, you know, an alpha on one line, a gamma on the other, whatever. Um, I probably shouldn't say this, but I use Old West Saxon letters 
all the time. Um, so, yes, I'm giving it away. If you want to crack my passwords, I hope your old West Saxon is good. Pop them out and just drop them in. Uh, it will create the most ridiculously secure password because even password crackers, the, the software that goes in and cracks your password, are not equipped to do this. <sighs> 30 of them in 30 minutes. I didn't believe I could do it. All right. Have a great day, everyone. I will not see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Tuesday. And as you know, I'm taking Tuesdays and Thursdays off because we are on a looser lockdown situation. But speaking of lockdown, we do have people in our little YouTube community who are having trouble coping. Those of you who have offered to act as support and lifelines for these people, I'm going to start pinning comments at the top of each of the videos so that you can find those of you who need the support and those of you who want to render the support can find one another through that top pinned comment. Um, I know it looks like we're very close to the end. Not all of us are very close to the end. And quite frankly, for a lot of us, this has been a serious ordeal. And some of us are just at the very end of our tether. Uh, for those of you who feel you would like some support, you plug into the comment, let people know, because the people who have, we, we have retired medical professionals, we have retired social workers, we have people who are skilled at doing this. Additionally, keep in mind, studies have shown that for low-grade depression and anxiety, the support of a friend is going to do you as much good as qualified medical support. And the studies show that. Psychologists don't like to admit that one, but it's true. So the outreach is there if you need it. If you want to reach out, plug into the comment, let people know. If you need someone to reach out, plug into the comment, let people know. All right. Have a fantastic couple of days. I will be back on Wednesday.